I didn't bring my glasses and I got so upset because Diana's <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight. I'm the third generation of four generations of Montville farmers. Our family income has always depended on land and building resources of our farm. We have for 45 years kept very accurate production and financial records so that we may accurately, as accurately as possible, forecast our income in the future, or our income possibilities. On our farm, it is becoming increasingly apparent that it is in the not too distant future, rising property taxes will make achieving a living nearly impossible. I understand the variables of state school funding and state funding for our correction system. I understand the impact of these variables on the school and county assessments of our property tax. I understand the difficulty of balancing the state's budget in these very difficult economic times. At the same time, I know that the government operations of the state of Maine have essentially not been subjected to the scrutiny of an outside audit for 35 years. Recent audits of the Department of Human Services and Main Type Turnpike Authority have not withstood the scrutiny of outside verification. If the state of Maine were a publicly traded company and Maine taxpayers were prospective shareholders, we would not buy stock in a company that had not had an external audit procedure for 35 years. Yet as residents, we are compelled by law to fund our schools and our jail system to our property tax assessment on our homes and our farms. Does your administration have any plans to initiate independent audits on other state departments, commissions, and agencies? Yes. <laughs> Actually, the zero-based budgeting is, uh, the, first of all, the state is subjected to many audits. Uh, federal audits uh, uh, come all the time. Uh, the Department of Health and Human Services has probably been audited three different programs this year. Uh, Department of Labor, same way. So there are a lot of audits. But, but your, your point is well taken. I think the state needs a, an independent, full statewide audit. And that's what the zero-based budgeting program is intended to do, is to look at every single thing. Now, there is an agency of the government that is, does not work for the executive branch. It works for the legislature. And it's called OPEGA. And they are doing internal audits all the time. And I will tell you, they are tough. I've looked over some of their programs, some of their recommendations, and they have made dozens of recommendations over the last decade, and not a single one was ever implemented until we became, I became governor, and this group here at this table is now implementing recommendations that were made back in 07, 08, 09. So we are working on that. That's a very good question now. I'm going to give you some good news. There are eight quasi-independent authorities in the state of Maine. They've been formed by the legislature during the past 50 years. They provide good services to the citizens of the state of Maine. For example, the Turnpike Authority was created to collect toll money to create 109 miles of road and maintain it. Now, you can see what happens when a lot of money is involved with the same people for a very long period of time. There have been problems at the turnpike that folks have known about for a long period of time. And the government of the pages of leadership, we are not sweeping anything out of the rug. I'll give you another good example. One of the board, I sit on all these authority boards, except the turnpike. <laughs> One 
of those authorities on which board I sit is called the Maine State Housing Authority. Now, their job is very straightforward. They take taxpayer money from Washington and from the state of Maine to try to create affordable housing for those who truly need in our state of Maine. Until last week, I was one of ten board members. As these board members and all these authorities are turning out, or breaking the news to them, very gently they will not be reappointed. They all serve at the, government, the pleasure of the governor. And we are reappointing new board members who are business folks for the most part with no conflicts of interest. At Maine State Housing, one of the things we have discovered is that it costs them two to three hundred thousand dollars to build two bedroom apartments. <laughs> Now, the state of Maine, the state of Maine, the average single family home is $160,000. It's about 2,000 square feet. You tell me why the taxpayers of the state or this country should be allowing a quarter million dollar two bedroom apartments that are 900 square feet to be built. So, the good news, ma'am, is that we have adults involved. Calvin has arrived, and we are being dead serious about wisely spending taxpayer dollars. And we have, under the governor's leadership, changing the rules by which we will be building these homes, excuse me, these apartments. For example, there are no longer requirements to install solar hot water heaters. There are no longer requirements to provide health care for subcontractors. There are no longer requirements to give special uh, bonus points, if you will, in the bidding process for nonprofits. So we're watching this very closely. We're introducing competition to drive down the cost of these units so we can build more of them. 